Hello everybody, welcome to CSM Supplies. Today we are going to make the heel tab no show sock. This, I had a criticism that I don't ever show what I do. This is a heel tab no show sock. It's a short sock with a little tab in the back so when you put it on that's what goes up against the back of your tennis shoe. So, let's get started because I would like to do the whole sock. See, I have my yarn on cones. I'm working on a, it's an old, it's a Laguerre knitting machine. But it's actually one of their very early styles. It's kind of styled after a Creelman moneymaker. And I want to thank you guys for joining me today. Your view is going to be, as soon as I clip my phone in, you are looking at the half mark on the right side. So this is the 3 o'clock position. That would be the min midnight, 12 o'clock position, 6 o'clock position, 9 o'clock position. So I am going to switch over to my project yarn over here at needle number 1. Okay, try to stay out of your way so you can see everything really well. Okay, get that out of the way. I'll put that where I put everything else. It's my filing cabinet. I know, I'm a mess. So if you guys are asking me questions, I can't see the questions right now because I'm my own film person today. Whoops. So, if somebody has a question, I hope somebody else will answer it for them. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to knit this first row. I forgot to reset my counter. So, let's go ahead and do that. And I'm going to trip it because I went by there one time. I'm going to knit this first row without the heel spring. It makes it easier to hang the hem when we're done. Now I'm going to engage the heel spring and I'm going to knit a total of 10 rows. And I'm going to stop at 6 o'clock and I'm going to do the little heel tab. And the heel tab is nothing but a mini heel. Okay? But you've heard us talk about deep heels. Well, when you're doing a heel tab, you're going to use less than half of the needles. I'm going to use five less on each side. Okay. Now, I could do more. It just depends how wide you want that heel tab when it starts. Or I could do less. It doesn't matter. So, I'm going to... I'm gonna, I did five less, so I'm going to decrease five needles on each side. And by decreasing, all I do is take a needle out, knit the row, take a needle out of work, knit the row, okay, take a needle out of work, knit the row, needle out of work, knit the row. So now I've done, I've done three decreases on each side. This is the fourth one. My heel spring doesn't want to be engaged properly. So this is the fourth one on the left hand side. Here's the fifth one on this side, the right side. And I have to do the fifth one on the left hand side. Now, I've got a little weight issue. So I need to grab a heel fork. Which, as usual, they're missing in action. Now, how could you miss four heel forks? Oh, that would be because I took them to stock TV. So I'll just put this lightweight, this V hook, and this lightweight on here. Now, so I raised the fifth needle on this side. Now I have to crank the row. Now I'm going to do my increase, which means I'm putting needles back to work. Increase. And I'm putting one needle at a time back to work, just the way we took them out of work. OK. 
Okay. Now this is the next to the last one. Okay. If I decreased five, I'm only going to increase four. And that's still going to give me the heel tab, but it's not going to have a little hole right there where the little arch goes up or the slant goes up. How would you call that? I don't know. My words get confused because I have so many things to tell you. So now... My counter doesn't really do me any good. I'm going to knit 10 more rows and then I'm going to hang a hem. Okay? I'll probably just count those because I did 10 rows, then I did the heel tab. Now I'm going to do 10 more rows. I'm going to hang the hem so I have to remove all the weight. Get my handy dandy pick. Now this pattern was written by my friend Sue Vineski. It was a collaboration between a lot of different people. And you can download this pattern for free on this website, csmsupplies.com. It is probably the most downloaded pattern I have. It's a great starter sock because there's no ribbing. And it gives you lots of good practice with heels and toes, especially with the tab in there. So as I'm going around and hanging the hem, I'm going to tell y'all it's storming the van, or it's getting ready to storm. Thunder, lightning. You know, it's one of those pop-up afternoon summer showers that are so good for the garden. Of course, I watered this morning, so definitely it's going to happen. So, my, you'll note that I stopped at 6 o'clock. Now, I'm going to put my fingers in until I get to the, the first needle. Then I'm going to pull down. And I'm going to go to midnight so that I can hang all these needles without having to crank forward again. Or all these stitches. Or how about I hang stitches on needles? I guess y'all can tell this is never ever scripted. Now, the other thing I want to tell you is I know that I make this look easy but I have 10 years of practice under my belt. At first, this gave me hot flashes. Well, heels and toes gave me hot flashes for a really long time. Finishing up hanging this hem. Oh yeah. It's looking good, isn't it? one to hang. Oops, don't hang two. Oh, I forgot to cheat and weave in my tail. So, we'll just do that on this row. Let's see. Get my weight back on. Maybe move some of this stuff out from underneath the machine. And everything's good to go. Now, I'm going to knit five rows. Do you see a theme here? This is a theme of fives. And I only do that because there's one, two, three, four, five. Stop at six o'clock. I only do that so I can remember what to do for the next sock. Now, I'm going to make a heel with, guess how many needles deeper? One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to do a deep heel this time and a deep heel again that means I'm going to use more than half the needles okay now the deep heel 
is this is going to be a short row heel and the reason you do it with more than half the needles is so that the heel won't try to slip down your foot and go off the back of your you know how your when your heel slips down in your shoe and that is just so irritating well if we do a deep heel it avoids that from it won't happen and the shorter the sock, the deeper the heel. Now, if you're watching, I have gotten all these rows and I haven't installed my downward pressure yet. I'm going to give it a little tug on this one. I'm going to raise the needle. Then I'm going to bring in my V-hook and that little light weight that I used earlier might not be heavy enough. I think maybe I'll put another little weight on there. Okay. And I'm going to keep knitting. Raising a needle, knitting the row. Anything I do, the right side, the left side is a mirror image. So if I raise the needle, I have to raise the needle, crank the row. Raise the needle, crank the row on the right. Raise the needle, crank the row on the left. All right, now, some of you are saying, well, that never work out, doesn't work out like that for me. The tricky part about making heels and toes, besides remembering where you are, is knowing where to put the downward pressure. Okay, and unfortunately, I can tell you all day long where to put your downward pressure but until you understand why the downward pressure is where it is you're just gonna have to keep practicing I always say to give yourself a sacrificial ball of yarn and wind it up into a cone of some sort and make heels and toes for that whole ball of yarn. Now I have to count where am I? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is needle number nine. And this is needle number nine. So this is a 54 cylinder. So I had, let's see, 27 needles in work. So I decreased nine on this side, I decreased nine on this side. And I'd leave nine working needles in the middle. Now, once I get to here, I'm going to put my heel weights or my V-hook or whatever you call it, whatever you're using, I'm going to put those right here only under these working needles. And I shouldn't have to change them until I get to the toe. Now, here's another little trick. I'm going to do a figure eight wrap right here. Okay? because I'm going to lower needle number 8 and needle number 9. The reason I lower 8 and 9 at the same time is to make it a little less angular so there's not a little corner sticking out. Now I'm only going to lower one needle for the rest of the increases. Now, even though I did a deep peel, I went to my target needles. Okay, so I'm counting nine from my half marks. I'm not counting these. Does that make sense? Because I actually went 14. I decreased 14 rows on each side. Now, think about this. And write this down. If I decrease 14 rows, I'm only going to increase 13 rows. Let me say that again. If I decrease a total of 14 rows, I'm only going to increase a total of 13 rows on each side. So really it's like 26, but that's getting us all wrapped up in semantics. And we don't want to do that. I'll just show you what to do, okay? Because you can write notes and confuse yourself left and right all over the place when you're doing this.
and forget that what this is supposed to be is a fun hobby, relaxing, rewarding, you know, all the things you want hobbies to be. Now, look here, I have two needles left that I decreased. I'm only going to increase one, so when I lower this needle, this is the last time I'm going to go this direction. When I lower the second needle, it's the last time I'm going to go this direction. Alright, so I will lower the second needle on the left side. Come back around. Stop at 6 o'clock and put all the needles back to work. Now, the reason we do that is because if we went all 14 needles, there would be a gap right here and right here. We are decreasing 14 and increasing 13, so we don't have that gap, okay? It's, the, it's not a drop stitch. It's a gap that you get when you knit a short row heel unless you do something to prevent it. This is our preventative measure. Now I'm going to reset my counter. This time it's going to mean something. And I'm going to crank. And on this side, I'm going to crank 60 rows. Way there. Okay. Oh, wait, that's fifty. I think I'll crank it fifty rows because of the five theme I've got going on here. Now, anytime you make a toe, you always want to lift up half of the needles because you've got half of the needles. Wait a minute, let me get them up so I can. I never realized how much I use my hands to talk. We have half of the needles out of work and we have half of the needles still in work. We're gonna crank forward, complete that row and we're gonna decrease nine times. Now the difference between a heel and a toe, there is none until you get to the last row. So let me rephrase that, because there is no difference between a heel and toe until you get to the very last row. How about that? Ha, huh, I'm a poet. Whoa, I didn't complete that row. Almost had a little mishap. That needle needs to be raised. Yeah, it's got my, my poetry got me all discombobulated. Oh. <laughs> all right, so I'm needing some downward pressure. Now, up until that point, I was riding on the downward pressure that I had from making the heel, okay? I did not remove my heel weights, and you don't remove your heel weights until you need them again, or until you can get the buckle up over them. Now, let's stop and assess the situation. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this is the ninth needle on the right. So that means I raised the ninth needle on the left and cranked the row. Now I'm gonna do that funny little figure eight thing again and lower two needles. Again, I do that to round that curve. Funny little figure eight on this side. Now I'm only going to lower one needle at a time. Okay. Let me adjust my weight here. There we go. I've got my needle down. Whoa. We 
making sure those stitches are going to knit. You know, after 10 years, I still have to watch that yarn wrap around that latch. But I get in trouble every single time. If I don't pay attention, if I get busy talking to you guys, because sometimes I feel like I'm talking to myself. But if you're watching, there must be somebody out there, right? Okay, now, this is the second needle. Here's our half mark. Here's the second needle. I'm going to keep going. Right, lower the second needle on the left and knit the row. Now, I'm going to lower the first needle on the right and the first needle on the left. Okay? Then I'm going to knit the row. Now, that was classic. Classic drop stitch action right there. All right. Knit that row. Now I'm going to cut my yarn, leaving enough for the Kitchener. Sorry if I'm blocking your view. My crazy little scissor fob was <laughs> dangling funny. All right. Now I'm going to come back in with my highly contrasting, or contrasting, depending on if you say tomato or tomato, waist yarn. Waist yarn should always be as different from the project yarn as you can possibly get it. Now, if I start my yarn here, I'd be knitting backwards. So I'm going to bring my yarn carrier over here to the 9 o'clock position. Thread my yarn through, drop the tail down in there, and start that row. Once I start the row, I'm going to go to 6 o'clock. And I'm going to lower all these needles. Now, my needles are not magic, although you might think they are. What I'm doing is, you can see how I'm brushing those latches open. And then I lower them two at a time, making double extra sure that all the latches are open. Okay? Now, remember when we decreased 14 and only increased 13? It was to avoid this gap right here. Now, this time... We want this gap because that's going to tell us where to do our Kitchener stitch. I'm going to crank about 15 rows. Then I'm going to cut my yarn, let the tail fall to the outside of the machine, grab the whole project, weights and all, like a chicken by its neck. And I'm going to crank forward. Now, just full disclosure, I've never grabbed a chicken by their neck. But I imagine this is what it would be like. Alright, then I'm going to remove it from the machine. Take my weights off. Especially if you're using heel forks, be very careful. Because those heel forks can have super sharp tines that will cause serious damage. Alright, now... Let's see, can I get it far enough away from the camera? I know what I can do. I can unclip my phone and show you what we made. Of course, it's not complete because it still has the waist yarn on it, but I can lay it out here and you'll see what it's going to look like. So, how's that for showing you the project? Here's our heel tab, our lovely short row heel that's a very deep foot in our toe then we'll kitchener these uh, two lines of knitting to where there will be no seam in these socks I want to thank you so much for joining me on CSM supplies and I will see you next Tuesday at 2 over and out if I can figure out how to turn it off <laughs>